Thanks a lot, sir, and uh, welcome uh, to the second uh, joint webinar Core IFOL and Open Air to celebrate uh, Open Access Week uh, and uh, the topic of uh, equity and inclusion. So today we uh, will talk about uh, equity and inclusion in open science policies. Sir. And uh, if you missed our Wednesday webinar on um, equity and inclusion in uh, community-owned infrastructures for open science, uh, recordings of that webinar are already available on the webinar page here. And we'll also post a link on YouTube. Uh, but today we will talk about policies. Sir. And uh, many of us are at drafting either institutional or national open science policies now. And uh, for me, it's, it's been a challenge to make sure that uh, equity and inclusion uh, are not only nice words that we use, but they are really embedded uh, in the policies and they are really implemented. And um, that's why I, I have uh, a pleasure to introduce uh, to wonderful uh, speakers today. So one of them is Dr. Yuan, and uh, I wouldn't even try to pronounce his family name. Sorry about that. Uh, and Dr. Yuan will talk about uh, uh, research assessment reform in China, which started this year. And uh, it eradicates the five only. And uh, it's really big. And uh, we're all looking forward to the results, because I think it's a game changer. And another excellent speaker today is Lydia Vukcevic, and uh, she works at the Ministry of Science uh, uh, in Montenegro. And uh, Montenegro is a small European country which introduced an excellent uh, program of implementation of open science principles in the country very recently. And uh, sorry to say that, but uh, it's, you, you don't really need to be a large country like China to step in and uh, make changes uh, in the way re research and research assessment works in your country. So we'll have uh, two examples, uh, which are very recent, very interesting. Uh, and um, of course, an in inspiration for us was uh, French uh, national plan for open science that uh, specifically includes uh, equity and diversity in uh, open access to publications. For example, as you can see on this slide, uh, wording from their policies uh, that they are changing the way research assessment is done. Adhering to San Francisco Declaration on Research Assessment, uh, they uh, encourage use of open citations uh, using initiative of open citation. They uh, have strong call, you see call for open science and bibliodiversity. And uh, it's a part of their policy to develop less concentrated publishing environments uh, and adhere to the principles of open and ethical uh, publishing um, and open access. Uh, and uh, they have a special open science fund to support uh, diverse scholarly communication activities. Uh, if there are similar examples of policies in your countries that include equity and diversity, uh, please add them in a chat because we would like to collect them and we'd like to come up with some model wording uh, how they could be embedded uh, in uh, the new policies. And now, we're, now the, word, the floor is yours, Dr. Yuan. Thanks a lot for joining us. Okay. I share my screen. Yes, please.
Okay. And, uh, and can you see my screen? The presentation? Yep. Yes. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Good afternoon. And thanks for Irene's introduction. And uh, I am Yuan Junpeng. Uh, you, uh, you can call me Yuan. Uh, I'm from the National, National Science Library of Chinese Academy of Science, Science we call the CS. Uh, it's uh, my honor to invite you to introduce the new research assessments waveforms in China, eradicating the five only in science and technology management. This work is uh, by Professor Liu, Professor Deng, Deng is in this meeting, and uh, me. I will introduce it from three parts. The first is the background, and the second is the related policy. In the related policy, I will uh, introduce some main point of the policy and some typical measures in China. The last one is the effort of our library. And the first one, the first one is the background. Uh, in November 2018, the minister, the Ministry of Science and Technology, we call the most uh, the Human Resource and Social Security Ministry, China Chinese Academy of Science, uh, it, uh, the, we call the CS, and the Chinese Academy of Engineering, we call the CAE, began to clean up only academic papers, only professional titles, only education background, only awards. And therefore, the scientific research institutions began to eradicate the only academic papers, only challenges title, only professional titles, only education background, only award in research assessments. Here in after we refer to the five only. Uh, it means that the reduced assessment activities based on these indicators. Why we, and why the reform comes about, the first reason is that China's scientific research system and talent team has been basically sound. And look at this picture, we can see the number of SI papers of China have increased a lot. Therefore, the scientific research assessment and should be changed accordingly. The second reason is that the current uh, assessments uh, have some bad effects. For example, you take SCR as the main assessment index is harmful the development of domestic journals. I think uh, in this, this uh, uh, many countries have these problems. And secondly, is the current assessment system make many research pay much attention to the number of academic papers, ignoring the quality. And the thirdly is the, we say in selection, the talents with the title is not benefit to the selection of the young talents. And the take paper as the main assessment uh, is not benefit to the diversity diversity of scientific research achievement. The, so the next part is the related policies of the five only.
the earliest related policy is guiding opening on promoting the reform of talent assessment me mechanism by classification issued by the General Office of the Communist Party of China Central Committee and the General Office of the State Council is the top, 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 top organization in China. And in, and in 2018, uh, uh, President Xi Jinping said at the meeting of academic of CAE and CS, he says the a class, a classified assessment system based on the quality contribution and performance of scientific and technical innovation will established. And in July in 2018, uh, the State Council gave the opening on deepen, deepening reform of project assessments, talent assessments, and organization assessments. And in September 2018, at the National Education Conference, President, President Xi Jinping called for re resolute efforts to overcome long-standing problems that focus only on academic scores, advanced degrees, diplomas, titles. <laughs> Next, in November 2008, uh, eight, um, 18, most uh, issued a notice on special ac actions of clean up only papers, only titles, only academic qualifications, and only awards. And, the, and in April 2019, Tsinghua University uh, it's a famous school in our country, gave some opening on per perfecting the academic assessment systems. And in August uh, 2019, according the only academic and only contribution the Natural Science Foundation of China, we called ANSFC, put forward four assessment criteria about innovation in talent project assessments. And in, April, in February 2020, most most put forward some measures to uh, break the only paper. Uh, they said they gave the some opening on standards in the use of related index of SCR papers. And uh, in April 2020, Fujian province issued a, a notice to only papers. And in May 2020, Fujian, Fujian province and Jiangsu province issued the notice for the only papers. And in July, uh, in July the, the, the MOE gave the guideline on deepening the reform of the professional title system for teachers. And in, I mean, in, in, in August, the MOE gave the discipline assessment system in college and universities and promoting the 
modernization of education government system. All in, all in all, we can see the government of China has made a decision to reform the scientific assessment assessments. President Xi, the general office, most MOE, NSBFC, CAECS, and some university and some province have put forward some policies and measures to, in, to the five only. After reading the policy and count word frequency, we find the main principle of this reform is the following points. The is used representative people and the classification assessments and use the SI index correctly and, you, and the peer review in science and technology assessments and pay attention to the research integrity. As for the representative assessment system, uh, for example, to assessment the national, national price and the young and middle aged ladies, the number of representative works should not exceed five. And the innovation team in key area the number should not exceed 10. As for the classification assessments, we can see the, the policies give an easy order according to the correct characteristics and the policy this upon, uh, this upon, excuse me, this, this uh, possibilities of challenges and the position uh, and com combine the communist particularity and the po performance and the development, development, postural quality and quality asset assessments to establish the scientific and reasonable criteria for evaluating talents. We give the explain uh, better that uh, for the basic research, the assessments should focus on the innovation level and scientific value of the paper and the not does not take related to the index of science SR papers. For the applied research and technological innovation, the key point of assessment is actual contribution to solving the key technical problems and the actual efforts and the new technology, new products, and new process work, rather than the paper as a single assessment basis. For the service of national defense, the academic paper is generally not regarded as an assessment index. For the uh, discipline and uh, school assessments uh, suggest that we use the ranking assessments of subjects and schools. Uh, for the, as for the SCI papers, uh, uh, we don't not take the related index of SL papers as the direct basis of professional title assessments. 
uh, and uh, the talent and the organization assessments and the project assessments. For the peer review, um, we can Uh, which is mentioned many times in this policy documents. The uh, we think uh, we think the peer review will carried out and international review would be introduced for the basic research. For the basic research. Uh, give peer related to peer academic assessments and strength international peer review for the applied research and technological development and highlight the market assessments by user market experts and other relevant third part party assessments for the philosophy and social science emphasis on peer recognition and social benefits. Uh, the last one is, is the, the last main point is the research integrity. Uh, we focus on the uh, more moderate assessments, assessments index, and advocating integrity and integrated systems and ex exist mechanism. Next, uh, I will introduce a uh, typical measures about uh, uh, in the decade uh, five only is the NFCs, uh, the general risk of NFCs, uh, we, this, this, uh, they, pro, they uh, give four new devices of innovation has been used in the new rulers for talent projects evolutions evaluations. The first one is the methodologic innovation. The second is the key scientific evidence. Then the third is the theoretical con cognition of social needs. And the, and the last one is the discipline development. They use they use the, the four uh, indicators to 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 um, assessment the talent projects. The and the last part is the effort of the our library. Natural Science Library, Chinese Academy of Science Activity Advocate Open Access and Pay Attention to the Positive Evolution of Open Science on Scientific Research Event Assessments. For example, we expand timeless open access papers on science. Uh, one one stop one stop discover discovery plat, platform go OA, which integrates more than one thousand seven hundred OA journals. And we also hold the China Open Access Promotion Week. In October 
2020 and 21, we hold the 90th. It's also on, online. Professor Liu gave the keynote speak in, in the all offline the meeting. He is the first, uh, first, first uh, speech. And Professor Zeng also gave a speech on on this on this meeting. Beyond that, we had paid much attention on the research of center metrics. For example, in 2004, our college Li Yang's team established JCR subdivision table, um, which covered 18, 18 major disciplines. And our colleague Xiao Chu Le has done some works on evalu evalu evaluate and analysis the cited contains a paper with the four four with the four text. And I and my colleague Li Xue Wang's did some works on the editing uh, on the express relationships to improve the is improve the peer review. Uh, that is all my introduction. Thank you for your listen and uh, your comments is welcome. Thanks a lot, Dr. Yu. That was excellent, sir. And I wish every country had this kind of policy. That's excellent. So we have some questions already in comments, uh, and uh, they are in uh, Q and A functionality. So I'll uh, I'll read them to you uh, the way uh, that uh, they're written. Uh, so there was a question about uh, possibilities of opening science to everyone, especially students. And that was when you started talking. So I think with what you showed later on, uh, go open access, uh, open access journals portal. And there are also repository portals in China. And we could add some links in the chat to that. Uh, uh, so China promotes open access publishing and also promotes uh, open access repository. So I guess that question, yeah, and then efforts of National Science Library are here. So I guess that's uh, covered. And then um, a comment and question from uh, Dr. Fernanda Bagel, and uh, she is a chair of UNESCO Open Science Committee and under her leadership, uh, a very strong uh, and equitable open science recommendations have been uh, released in a draft form and I hope they will be uh, adopted next year. So she's writing, uh, I find that the concerns that boosted the China reform are present in Latin America, where we are trying to promote a transformation in research assessment systems also. Greetings from Mendoza, Argentina. And then her question, English writing was reinforced by the five only. Is Chinese as an academic language an issue in discussion currently? Do you address the language of publication in your discussions? Uh, I um, I can I see the discussion with the the English writing I only so what what about publications in 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 Mandarin? Do you do you encourage researchers write in English or in in Mandarin? Uh... Uh, 
I I I think in honey in honey is the uh, we use the five five only for the for this phenomenon um, is the all the all the academic papers the in the in Chinese and in the English language we also uh, in, in, we also the, in the, 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 the five only it's also other. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then Bilana Kozanovic from University of Belgrade is rating moving out from the impact factors cost more since the evaluation based on the impact factor is very cheap, easy and unfair. The reviewer work costs much more in money, but also in working hours. Uh, does National Science Library have some estimation on the costs? Do you expand the teams of academics for reviewing? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I ask the my college uh, professor to uh, give this give some comments for this mm -hmm. yeah i'm promoting her as, as a panelist so she should be able to speak uh, shortly if, if if she unmutes her mic okay if you this hello hello yes we can hear you uh, thank you. Uh, uh, do you mean um, we uh, whether we count the uh, cost? To yes, the, uh, uh, cost uh, to to evaluate. Uh, 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 how how much uh, evaluate. Uh, eva evaluation will cost now? Because you have expert reviews, will it be more expensive for you now? Mm -hmm. Oh, you. You mean the cost about the uh, evaluation? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, sorry, I'm not quite sure about the answer. Uh, uh, I think uh, at the present, we 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 work uh, uh, when we evaluate uh, the projects. We often. Uh, we often use the uh, uh, peer review. We often we often evaluate the project by peer review. We think that it's expensive, but we we do not count the cost. And uh, when in Chinese Academy of Science, uh, when we evaluate the institution's perform uh, performance, we encourage the uh, we encourage uh, the institute to invite the international experts to evaluate uh, uh, it is expensive but we think it is uh, very useful sorry i i don't know yeah we, yes. we do not <laughs> we do not <laughs> come the of course, I think uh, perhaps the headquarter of the case, we will, we will think about this question. Thank you for your answer. I, I think I think you answered it. Uh, mm -hmm. That it's 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 more expensive, but it's it's important. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. And then there is a comment from Ravia from um, Islamic University of Gaza. Publications in other languages except English are unfortunately invisible. People address usually their communities' needs and problems mm -hmm. in their language. However, such research works are not considered for promotion in local universities. And I guess that's what uh, China is doing now, that uh, mm -hmm. they're changing that and they are looking at uh, the impact that this paper makes. Mm -hmm. 
So that was rather a comment. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so if uh, if there are any other questions, we'll come back to them after Lydia's presentation. And uh, now I'm very happy to give the floor to Lydia to talk about open science policy developments in Montenegro, because for me, that's one of the success stories uh, this year, in addition to China. Thanks a lot. And thank over to you, Lydia. Uh, thank you, Irina. Uh, thank you, first of all, for the opportunity once again to take part in this event and to share our policy in this way. It is also, to us, it is one of the success stories that we achieved this year. Uh, so uh, I would like to start, so actually, uh, to start off, uh, the program of implementation of open science principle is uh, a strategic document that, among other things, defines the plan of our activities in that open science in the forthcoming two-year two period. So firstly, I'd like to say a few words about the development process. So the program was created by a working group composed of representatives of the Ministry of Science and the representative of University of Montenegro as we immediately saw the importance of involving uh, a member of academia in the process. Also, uh, we worked with an external expert whose knowledge and guidance were of, of particular importance uh, for this entire process. So in this process, we also carried out consultations with main research institutions and stakeholders in the country this was also very important as it allowed us to identify their perception of the matter and challenges they have faced in terms of practicing open science. It also helped us a lot to better shape and improve the overall document. Uh, so after extensive work, the program was sent to the government and finally adopted in June 2020. Uh, for us, this was an important milestone, although it is just the first stage of fully aligning uh, the Montenegrin research ecosystem with open science principles in the European research area. Uh, now, the vision of Montenegro as set out in the program is that all research activities should be based on open science principles. This implies that they should benefit the society as a whole and that public funding directed at research activities ought to be spent efficiently and transparently. So uh, it is clear that the objective that everyone is trying to achieve is to make every step of the scientific process visible and accessible and to make it available to both scientific and wider community. However, in reality, we see that the scientific knowledge production is much more closed, fragmented and isolated from social problems than it is expected. Uh, the reasons for this can be manifold. Uh, these are some, only some of the examples. For example, uh, scientific practice becomes locked in the pursuit of individual success because scientists compete to reach their priorities and therefore much of their knowledge is not disseminated. Also, researchers are motivated to guide their research toward, towards areas, topics, and methods that would be widely, widely cited. So this, not, not, this does not necessarily coincide with societal needs. Also, scientific policies oriented towards commercialization of scientific knowledge increasingly lock up scientific knowledge. Uh, as for the situation in Montenegro, uh, we found that there were no adopted policies or recommendations, at least related to open, open access practicing, nor has this been required by the research funders so far. So this means that the implementation of these principles is up to individual researchers. There have, there have been, however, some initiatives, both from the Ministry of Science and from the University of Montenegro, uh, for example, uh, years, a uh, few years back, uh, since few years back, the Ministry of Science has been co-financing the publication of papers by Montenegrin researchers in open access journals, and also supporting the publication of open access sci scientific journals indexed uh, in the directory of open access journals. Uh, as for University of Montenegro, 
uh, they signed the Berlin Declaration on Open Access in October 2018. They also created a digital archive of the university, which includes an open electronic database of doctoral dissertations defended at University of Montenegro. So analyzing this situation has led us to define the primary aspects of open science that are to be further developed in Montenegro. Uh, these include open access to scientific publication, open access to research data, as these two are the inevitable part of the research process. But in addition to that, also open access to research infrastructures, having in mind, having in mind the importance of availability of research infrastructures for the overall research process. So considering the limited number of activities in this area, in order to change research culture and to achieve greater efficiency in introducing the obligations of practicing open science principles, we found it necessary to apply a phased approach. So to gradually develop the necessary framework, including technical, organizational, regulatory, and other aspects. Uh, this also implies inevitable uh, awareness raising of all stakeholders about the importance of open science. So what does this specifically mean, mean for the three aspects that we define? In terms of open access to scientific publications, the first step would imply creating a national repository for publications that would be a single point of access to overall national research results as well as devising adequate rules for its use that will apply to all stakeholders taking part in the research process. Once this infrastructure is established and the rules are prescribed, the practice of green open access will become mandatory, which means that all publications that result from publicly funded research will have to be deposited in national repository and be made available for reading, downloading, printing, etc. In the meantime, until this national repository is built, in order to immediately start strength, strengthening the open science culture in terms of this aspect, it will be recommended that publications resulting from publicly funded research are stored in well-known international repositories in accordance with the principles of green open access. Uh, the approach, the approach is similar for open research data. So it implies establishing a national repository for storing data and adopting the relevant rules for its use. And once this infrastructure is established, all data will have to be stored in the national repository. So here again, up to that point, it will be recommended that all research data are stored in one of the existing repositories. As for open research infrastructure, the first phase would involve the creation of national digital registry for research infrastructures or joining one of the existing stable international platforms. Uh, also, it is necessary, necessary to clearly define the rules of access and use of research infrastructure in accordance with the modalities and purposes of the access. Uh, that is to say, that access is focused on either, either on research or education, achieving market ben benefits, and so on. So this registry that will be either formed or that will be joined by us will initially contain information on the infrastructure and scientific research institutions holding them, as well as on the services that they would provide in accordance with the national road, roadmap for research infrastructure. So here I should clarify that the national roadmap for research infrastructure is actually the result of extensive work on recording the research infrastructure that is available at national level. This was done with a view to better defining the priorities and sources of funding the research infrastructure, but also to consider the opportunities to share the infrastructure uh, in order to create better possibilities and better environment for researchers nationally. Uh, the new round, uh, so we had actually two rounds of mapping research infrastructure 
and the new round is uh, expected to be carried out in 2021. Uh, one very important issue that we had in mind uh, when we were drafting the program is the necessity of introducing changes in assessment practices in terms of acknowledging open science activities and including these metrics in the distribution of funding, evaluation of project proposals and results. So in order to promote practice of open science principles, we found it necessary to introduce criteria for assessment and rewarding researchers who follow open access principles in their careers. In this regard, uh, key activities include uh, additional acknowledgement of publications published according to open access principle in the assessment of research work at different levels, integrating research data management, openness and fair principles into the process of assessment and evaluation of research at different levels, promotion of researchers who practice open science principles, acknowledging the practice of open science principles during research recruitment procedures, evaluation of project proposals, evaluation of institutions and awarding research rewards. So this is one of the most important parts as it will boost the motivation both for researchers and for institutions. And it will also be a solution to some of the problems mentioned in the, in the beginning. Uh, the final important activity or the one that goes simultaneously with all of the mentioned ones refers to awareness raising of all open access, open science stakeholders. Uh, this, this actually requires comprehensive organization and awareness raising of awareness raising activities, but also uh, necessary actions at sectoral levels. Uh, so it is important, uh, for example, for researchers to be aware of benefits of open science, uh, of benefits that it can bring them and they should acquire new knowledges and skills through continuous training, starting from the beginning and support uh, also support, they, they should have support to their disciplines throughout, throughout their career. This also means that higher education institutions should include topics related to open science in their curricula, which we will do our, do our best to uh, impact in order, in order to immediately start building the solid basis and incorporating this practice in the research process. So to, to sum up, uh, the program uh, has set uh, four operational goals uh, through which uh, we would create a solid basis for the implementation of open science principles in Montenegro. And these are improving legislative framework that enables the application of open science principles, establishing national infrastructure for open science to improve research and innovation activities, enhancing the implementation of open science principles to improve excellence and relevance of scientific research activities, developing human capital uh, through education and promotion of open science principles to, to strengthen competitiveness in the field of research. So by achieving this, we will significantly improve the research culture uh, in Montenegro, and we are truly determined to do so. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Lydia. That was excellent. Um, sorry. I saw more questions, so I'm just trying to... Um, so I think one of them was answered already, thank you. So there, are, there is a question and a comment. Um, uh, Beliana Kazanovich is writing, congratulations to Montenegro. The plan seems to be very promisable. What is the timeline for establishing uh, national repositories and uh, who are the main stakeholders in this process? Uh, okay, so uh, the plan is actually uh, to finish this up to 2022. So we have two years to cover all of these activities. It is a bit demanding, especially considering all of the activities, uh, other activities that uh, need to be completed. 
uh, and the main, main stakeholders would be uh, institutions, um, funders, research funders. Of course, researchers are always uh, part uh, those who are the beneficiaries of this process. Thanks. Uh, so there is also a question from uh, Hanna Yanetskova. Uh, do your researchers have to deposit in uh, a national repository if they already have uh, an institutional repository? But I guess it's not the case, right? You, you don't have institutional repositories and no, you decided uh, not, not to set up two types. You, you'll just go with one national, right? Yes, uh, the, goal is, the goal is to cover, to put everything in national repository, everything that uh, results actually everything that results from publicly funded research, uh, to put everything in national repository. Uh, as for institutional repository, there is one institutional repository uh, I mentioned for doctoral dissertations at University of Montenegro. Uh, but still, uh, after we complete this, all research that is funded through uh, either partially or in full, Part, uh, which is funded through uh, national funds will have to be deposited in this new national repository. Thank you. And Ravia is writing very interesting work. It's really a success story. We're planning uh, for a similar national roadmap uh, with the Ministry of Higher Education in Palestine uh, for 21-24. Hope we can collaborate uh, on this issue in the future. Certainly, we are here. You can contact us for any our for any experience that we have or advice that we can share. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, there are lots of thanks uh, to, to all the speakers in the chat as well. Uh, so I, I don't think uh, I missed uh, any questions. Uh, if you want to ask your question uh, while speaking, you could also raise your hand. Or if you could add a comment, sir. And uh, thank you once again uh, to our excellent speakers. Um, thank you. So just checking whether any new questions or comments uh, arrived. Uh, we'll make slides and recording available, um, and um, we'll also add links to policy documents. Uh, there is already a link to Montenegro program uh, on the webinar page, and like I said, it's. I think it's it's a model document for any country working on uh, the policy. Any questions, comments, reflections? So maybe I, I can uh, I can thank you for for joining today and. Uh, I can also say that uh, it's not the only joint webinar we plan uh, with uh, Core in Open Air. Uh, we will also have another webinar in November, towards the end of November, on uh, open science policy developments in India, because there are also very interesting discussions going on around national law and uh, science technology and innovation, and uh, how to include equity, diversity uh, in uh, that policy document. So we'll have uh, a colleague from India joining and sharing uh, their work. And uh, thank you once again to our dear colleagues at uh, National Science Library, Chinese Academy of Sciences. So it's always great to see colleagues and friends. And um, thanks a million, Lydia for joining us today and for rescheduling your your meetings um, any other last minute uh, thoughts reflections uh, i guess 
Hi, it's Kathleen from CORE. Uh, I'd also like to thank our colleagues from China and Montenegro for their great presentations. And I'm wondering how we can share this information more widely. I mean, we've had this um, webinar today, but I think it would be interesting um, to have both of these policies more visible with policymakers in other countries so they, they can learn from your, the, the interesting policies that you're adopting that are taking a different direction. So um, I'd be interested in, in your thoughts about how to get the word out, um, whether we could just collect the policies and post them, or we could try to have um, uh, more uh, policy discussions in the future. Well, maybe if we could highlight uh, some uh, clauses related to um, equity and diversity in policies, because uh, what, what really striked me in the uh, Montenegro document that uh, there is a very strong word in uh, describing uh, current research assessment system and scholarly communication and how it doesn't favor research in other languages, uh, researchers from um, other countries. Uh, so th this, this kind of uh, statements and examples are, uh, I think, re really useful. Um, and um, I don't know, maybe we could have something like, I don't know, highlights uh, from the policy as, I don't know, model wording that uh, others could include. Uh, and. Um, I don't know about China, whether, whether there are any plans to translate your policies in English. I guess not, because these are large policy documents. Uh... Okay, fine. Okay, yeah. mm, I, I don't know the, uh, the, the, the language you mentioned for what do mean the language saying we said we do not publish English paper or we publish in the paper in Chinese? Yeah, what, what we said that uh, you have very good policies, but they are in, uh, in your language, so we can't read them. Uh, I mean, even Montenegro policy is also in, in uh, Montenegro and then in, uh, in English, but there is an English translation. In oh. your case, there is no English translation of your policies, but I think you covered uh, in your slides very well uh, what those policies address. So if we could yeah. make your, your slides available, uh, yes, highlights. The, <laughs> the policy did not have the uh, official condition. We mm -hmm. can read uh, by our colleague. So the, 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 the language is not correct for the policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Ravi is suggesting uh, a page on open air with policy samples. Uh, yeah, we can discuss that. It could be open air, it could be core, it could be Eiffel. Uh, yeah. But I, th I think we're in agreement that uh, it would be important to start collecting these examples and share with others. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, I would just add, of course, which is maybe it is implied. So whatever additional questions uh, you may have regarding our policy or the process of making it for uh, later on in the stage of implementation, even about that, uh, we remain at your disposal for anything. So you can contact us. We can provide our uh, examples of our practice so you can count on, count, count on that. Thank you so much, uh, and we'll be in touch because uh, there is a lot of interest. Uh, and Ravi was suggesting ambassador translation, but I guess it's hard if these are official policy documents. Uh, you can't really rely on volunteer translation. Um, so 
So thanks a lot, Sarah, once again. And um, happy last day of the Open Access Week. And let's hope that this Open Access Week will continue longer than um, just this week. Uh,